Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking bad this content is. If this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to get your head checked. But in either case, thank you very much for being here and getting your thrice weekly dose of nonsense. For today's deck profile, we are looking at the Rocky Boys. That's right, you thought they were dead when Block Dragon went away. Well, you'd be absolutely fucking right. This is one of those decks, so that can just have an infinite number of extenders and can just go absolutely fucking mental in the right hands. The downside of losing Block Dragon is that a lot of what the day had in the ability to recover if things went wrong, they no longer have. However, the deck is still incredibly explosive, a bit more of a glass cannon than it was before, but an absolute fuck ton of fun to play. So if you're someone out there that's still creaming your pants at the days of yesteryear when your deck was relevant, you may like this video. And whilst we're on the subject of cards, if you're out there and you're looking to buy some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles or even some Pokemon ones, you should check out the link in the description to the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. And if you use that link, you'll net yourself a cheeky discount on their eBay store, courtesy of yours truly, on their Yu-Gi-Oh! and their Pokemon singles. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So before we get started, let me first apologise if there are any crazy noises in the background, or in particular if there is a loud fan-like sound, that is probably my laptop going absolutely fucking insane like it always does. Fortunately, I can edit most of it out in the background, usually through my audio editing, but in case I miss any of it, apologies in advance. So today's deck profile takes a lot of liberties, and this is just what I've tested so far, so it's certainly not perfect, but it is a hell of a lot of explosive fun to play. I've opted to play a couple of additional engines in here than you'd usually see in these kind of decks, but honestly it works really well so far. Again, a massive glass cannon, certainly far from perfect, but something that you hopefully can have an absolute ton of fun with. So in the absence of the old builds, we are opting to play a lot more of the Adamantopator monsters. We haven't gone down the route of playing the fucking egg things yet, but we are playing the main boys. So we've got Triple Seeker, Triple Researcher, and Triple Analyzer. Again, I find that these work really well in these particular quantities. Usually you'd play a few less in the, uh, in the older versions of the builds, but I think three of each works really well in this one. I still don't know how to pronounce this card's name. I don't know if it's Gigantes or Gigantes or whatever the fuck it is. I'm playing two copies of him and two of the Rock Spirit, which is basically the same goddamn card. Honestly, there's no real difference in terms of what you want to play here. You could just play three of this one, three of this one, whatever the hell you like to do. I think two of each works quite nicely. For what it's worth, having the different names can come up under rare circumstances and scenarios. But really, for me here, I think this is perfectly fine. There's no real rhyme or reason between the two and two. It's just what I've decided to go with. We then move on, we're playing a slightly bigger Kwakimeru package here. Apologies if you see a little jump cut there, I somehow misclicked and ended up deleting fucking cards from the deck, but there you go. So, we're running a single copy of Kwakimeru Overlord, I think this works absolutely fine as a one-off. We're running Triple Guardian, I think that this is still perfect as is. And we're running double copies of Supplier, I think that this package works really nicely as is and i really don't feel you need much more than that again you could cut some of this if you wanted to but i find that this ratio works quite nicely for me overlord and guardian are both really good cards to finish your first turn on of course providing you can keep them on the field because they can stop your opponent from going off and supplier being the search card is really really nice Revival Golem could be quite cool. One of those cards you can dump off Doki Doki and get as a free search. This is entirely up to you. I find that one of these works really quite nicely, but not everyone is a big fan of this card. I do think, though, that the one is really cool. And we're running some of the honor maps. The go 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 Go, 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 Gigas. One copy of this is perfectly fine. Works quite nicely from my experience. A single copy of Zuba Bancho is perfectly fine as well. Again, just a single copy here is more than enough. Go, 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 giant. And double copies of Dwarf and go, 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 go,
I find that this ratio works quite nicely in testing for me. This, of course, is lots of free bodies, lots of free generation of advantage, and lots of all the good stuff that you could possibly want. The downside here with this one is that he's just a bog standard warrior, not a rock, but he does come up from time to time being able to get those extra bodies on board. And then we're running triple copies of Doki Doki. I feel like this is a bit more important in the modern builds, being able to just get those resources out as quickly as possible, where you don't have the same access that you had before with the likes of Block Dragon. Tackle Crusader comes up a little bit more than it did before as well. Given the fact that you can book monsters down is quite nice in the current format, and also the fact that it helps deal with a little bit of back row, which is something that is quite heavy at the moment. This can be a really good card to set you up. Running a single copy of Recover. Sure, it's not a rock, but it is an Earth, so therefore has its own synergy in that respect. Also, the fact that it can help you make Nat Beast, which is incredibly strong at the moment, and something that you should definitely look at including in your particular builds. Recover works quite nicely. We are going to churn through our extra decks quite quickly, so being able to fulfill the requirements of this card is very, very easy to do. Two copies of Nemesis Keystone. I was very, very tempted to kind of go uh, full extension with these and play a lot more of them. But honestly, in and of itself, it's really cool. The fact that it can help recycle cards, it becomes a free extender. It's just a lot of good stuff that you want to be able to have in this deck. Onomatopoeia, just being free searches is really nice. Dumping stuff into the grave, what's not to like about that? Triple signs, being able to rig the top of your deck, which is always a good thing. And being able to put extra bodies on board is nice. A single copy of Foolish Burial because, well, dumping pretty much anything in this deck into the grave works nicely. Automata Pickup, being able to search the other spell card is really, really nice. And the fact that it can help you get into your deck a little bit quicker is always good. There's also the fact that it can help you make easier ranked fours. Not that that's really a problem in this deck. And then we move on to our extra deck here. We have omitted the side deck because, honestly, I think it's really open to interpretation. And depending on what kind of event you're going to be playing at will depend and affect what builds you're playing. There are plenty of videos out there, though, that will discuss side deck theory. That's up to you to go out and look for those. I'm just going to get stuck straight into the extra deck here. Now, it is worth noting that there are about 4 billion different fucking options for the extra deck that you could possibly go into. The fact that this deck can do so much, you can play a lot more rank 4s, you can play a lot more synchros if you wanted to, you can play even more link monsters. This is entirely up to you. This, however, is what I've been playing so far and works quite nicely for me. So playing a single copy of Borrowload Savage here, the most generic negate in the game, but really, really fucking strong. A card that you want to be ending on in turn one. The utility of the Adamantopay Arisen cards is really cool. So having one copy of each in here comes up quite nicely. Cyberspace Beast Juju does come up a little bit more, especially with Gigantes, Gigantes, where the fuck he's called. And the Rock Spirit, of course, being able to fulfill that requirement a little bit easier can help make it a bit more sticky and keep it on the field. There's also the fact that they can help you send cards on the field to the graveyard. This is a really cool utility card and one that you want to take advantage of. Now, this isn't something that I'd normally include, but Naturia Barking works quite nicely. Again, there's a lot more trap-heavy builds going on in the world at the moment, but the real... Big Wumper here is Naturia Beast. We know that this card is incredibly strong. Um, it's particularly good at the moment. So it's a really cool option to go into on turn one. And the fact that we can summon it quite easily is a massive, massive boost to the deck. Running a single copy of Gallant Granite, I think just the one is fine. Again, there's just so many different options you could go with here. You could run more copies if you wanted to, but I think one is honestly just plenty. Running a single copy of Digusto Emerald, again, because we can churn out so many cards, we want to be able to replenish our resources a little bit, and this can help us do just that. And then onto our links, these are all pretty self-explanatory, at least in my opinion. IP Masquerader for interrupting your opponent. Chris Ron Halka Fibrax, because it's fucking bullshit. Two utility cards in Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn. Popping back row, spinning cards. A single copy of Appaloosa, because it's a really fucking good card. And Access Code Talker for just absolutely smacking the fuck out of your opponent. If you don't have access to Access Code Talker, you can always go for the likes of Boral Sword. But honestly, being able to pop cards and then put through damage works better than just doing a ton of damage in and of itself. And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for making it this far, you little fucking weirdo. It's insane that you have. You're one of the rare few you are. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you're here, means that you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or maybe you just hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either of those scenarios, I'd really like to hear from you in the comments exactly what you thought of the video. And I do take the time to read as many of those comments as I possibly can. It's also worth noting that if you're considering hitting subscribe but haven't quite hit that button yet, we do 
do other content on here. I do how to play videos, combo tutorials, lots and lots of event vlogs and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, there's no locals at the moment. The well is a little bit dry and of course I can't discuss why, otherwise I'd get fucking demonetized. But in any case, you probably want to get on with your life, so that's enough of me for you. Thank you very much for coming along and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.